The head to tail method is how we represent multiple vectors and the resultant vector. Let's look at some examples. In this video, we'll be looking at the steps on how to draw a head to tail diagram, and we're gonna be practicing a few examples. Let's go. Now, before we jump into the head to tail diagram, we need to discuss what a tail is and what a head is when it comes to a vector. As you can see, my vector on the screen, the length of the vector indicates the magnitude, the direction that it's pointing indicates the direction of the vector. The tail is this end of the vector. Okay, so not the arrow head. And the head is this pointy part of the vector, otherwise known as the arrow head. Makes sense. So let's have a look at the head to tail method. Step one tells us that we draw the first vector V1 on a diagram. So for example, if we have a scenario where we have a box, let's say we have two people pushing the same box at the same time, our head to tail diagram would look like this. Our first vector would point to the right. That is V1. Step one, done. Step two, draw the second vector V2 by placing its tail at the head of the first vector. So here's the head of the first vector to draw our second vector. Remember, V1 is pointing to the right, V2 is also pointing to the right. So we're gonna draw the tail over here and it's also going to be pointing to the right. Remember, you're going to use a ruler and you're going to do it straight. That is V2. In this case, we only have two vectors, two force vectors. However, you may have three or four or five. So you repeat step two until you are complete with all your vectors. Then in order to draw the resultant or the net vector, what we do is we draw an arrow from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last. So tail of the first to the head of the last, which is why some people prefer to call this method the tail to head method because the resultant goes from the tail of the first so this is my first vector remember v1 so it starts here tail of the first and it points to the head of the last that is our net vector there we go and remember to always label your diagrams in this example over here i've got three force vectors acting on a certain object i don't have a picture for you so you need to visualize force one is 20 newton to the right Force 2 is 13 newton to the right. Force 3 is 10 newton to the left. Now, in a previous video, we looked at how to calculate the net vector or the resultant vector using vector addition. That is what I've done over here. So if you need more help with that, click the link in the description. You can see I've chosen a positive direction and I've done the calculation. Now we're going to focus on how to do the tail to head or head to tail vector diagram. Let's start with our first force vector. 20 newton to the right. So we're going to take an arrow and we're going to point it to the right. In this case, we're not doing a diagram according to a scale. So we're just going to more or less say, okay, this one is about 20 newton and this one's going to the right. Let's call it F1. You need to label your diagrams. So there we go. That's F1. F2, 30 newton to the right. So now remember, you do the tail of the second vector so that it touches the head of the first vector like this. It's also going right. So it's going to point this way. I'm going to draw it slightly bigger. And obviously you're going to use a ruler. Mine's a bit skew. F2. As you can see, head to tail. That's why this is the name of this method, head to tail. That's my second force vector. My third force vector is going 10 Newton left. Now, everybody, if I had to do this, that's obviously wrong. Because this third vector, on, as I've indicated it here on the diagram, is pointing to the right. But I know that it needs to point to the left. So what you do is as follows. You still need to touch the tail to the head of the second vector. So remember, I'm trying to draw F3 now. My tail of F3 still needs to start over here. But because it's going to the left, it needs to point that way. Like that. So it's still head to tail because look carefully the head of f2 is next to it's not touching but it's there this one f3 now the reason why i don't draw it on top of it is because i won't see f3 but i know that some people do it like that as well we just draw it underneath but basically this head of f2 is touching the tail over here okay that's how we do it now to draw the resultant vector remember the rule 
Let's go back to our rules. Our rule is that you draw the resultant or the net from the tail of the first to the head of the last. So if we look at our example, we go from the tail of the first, which is over here. So I start my net vector over here and it points to the head of the last. There we go. That is our net vector from the tail of the first, which is there, pointing towards the head of the last, which is there. That's our net vector. And we work this out according to our vector addition or our vector sum. F1, remember, was 20. F2 was 30. F3, which is pointing in the opposite direction, is 10 Newton left. So this F net is 40. And that makes sense because if you think about this entire length over here representing 50 and this entire length over here representing 50 as well. So it all does make sense. And that F3 absolutely has to point in the opposite direction. Let's take a look at this example. We've got Chloe pushing a box with 5 Newton to the right. Liam helps her and pushes with 20 Newton to the right as well. Draw a vector diagram using head to tail to show the forces and the net force. Right, so we've got Chloe pushing 5 Newton to the right. Let's call this force of Chloe, Fc. Then we've got Liam also pushing to the right. So remember, the second vector, the Liam vector, is going to start here at the head of the Chloe vector, so like this. We're going to draw that vector longer because Liam's force, the magnitude, is greater than Chloe's. This is going to be the force of Liam. Then to get the net force, we go from the tail of the first pointed to the head of the last. Like that. That is F net. And there we go. Head to tail. Another example, we're also sticking with the pushing the box example. We've got Dean pushing a box 54 Newton to the right. Jonathan opposes Dean, which means that he goes against him and pushes the same box at the same time to the left with a force of 20 Newton. So let's draw Dean's force vector first to the right. So that is the force that Dean is pushing it with. We can also say force one. Then we've got Jonathan pushing it to the left. When we draw the second vector, we have to start over here at the head of the first vector. But because it's going left, it's going to look like this. Remember to draw it parallel. Okay, mine looks a little bit skewed, so remember to draw it parallel because it's going in the exact opposite direction. But his force vector is smaller, 20 Newton. So that's the force of Jonathan. Then the net force will be from the tail of the first pointing towards the head of the last. So that is F net. Just remember that if you have to draw vector diagrams using a scale, you need to indicate that scale. So say, for example, one centimeter equals 10 Newton. You have to indicate that one centimeter is equal to 10 Newton and therefore 54 Newton. You have to then convert that to centimeters. So 54 Newton will be 5,4 centimeters. For example, and how did I do that? To get from 10 to 54, I multiplied that by 5, comma, Four, so then one centimeter, this length will have to be 5,4 centimeters. And then the 20 Newton would be 2 centimeters. Okay, because if one centimeter is 10 Newtons and I'm trying to make it 20 Newton, 10 times 2 is 20, 1 times 2 is 2 centimeters, then you'd have to draw it according to scale. But in my case, I'm not drawing it according to scale, but I have taken into account that Dean's magnitude 54 is greater than Jonathan's magnitude of 20. So I've drawn Dean's arrow longer. In this example over here, I'm speaking about a person who's walking north and then east and then south and then west. So this person is changing direction. And I want a head to tail diagram to represent her walk. So all the different vectors Okay, so first, Mia is walking 50 meters north. And what we're going to do is we're just going to label this 50 meters. Then she turns and walks 20 meters east. So that's my first vector done. Then to draw my second vector, remember, I'm going to place the tail of this 20 meter vector by the head of this first one. Here's the head. So how it'll look is as follows. 
There we go. This is 20 meters east. Take notes of how it's pointing in the easterly direction. She then walks 12 meters south. Oh, just also take note, head to tail. Now, when I draw the south vector, the tail of my south vector has to start over here. And because it's going south, it has to point downward. So it'll look something like this. There's my 12 meters south. Just take note of how I'm drawing it smaller than the others. Finally, she decides to stop and walk 60 meters west. Okay, so we've done the south vector. As you can see, we're doing head to tail every single time. Now west. So our last vector is going to start over here, but it's going to point to the west. So it'll look like this. And yes, it does cross over my initial vector. It's 60 meters. So if my initial, my initial vector was, well, this first one over here was 20 meters east. You can see how small it is. This one has to be 60 meters. So three times bigger at least, more or less. So this is 60 meters. Now, how do you draw your resultant vector? Remember, just stick to the rules. It goes from the tail of the first. Now, if you take note, if you remember, my first vector was my 50 meter north vector. So the tail of that vector, here it is, it's this one over here. The tail of that vector is over here. And it points towards the head of the last vector. So from the tail of the first to the head of the last. Now, where was my last vector? It was my 60 meters west vector. It was this one over here. There it is. There's the head. So my resultant vector is going to go from here, pointing towards this one. So it's going to look like this. So there we go. From the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. And that is what we will call our F, or not our F net, it'll be our net. It's basically our displacement. And as we will speak about in another video, remember to check the links down below. Displacement is a change in position. So it's from where you started, this is where I started, to where I finished, this is where I finished. That is my change in position. It's my displacement, delta x. It's my net vector. From the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. Remember to check out the links in my description for more physics, more chemistry. I can't wait to see you in the next video.